water is different all over the world. That can make a big impact on your natural dyeing. Colors can shift and brightness can change depending on the dissolved minerals in your water. Our approach is always to try to work with the water we have. In most cases, you can develop an awareness of how your local water can affect your colors and then make adjustments. In this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to solve a number of problems that are often blamed on poor water. With those out of the way, we will turn to the issue of how to determine your water quality and what you can do to manage the water you have. So first, and I cannot say this enough, good dyeing begins with good scouring. Good scouring means putting your cloth or yarns in a stainless steel pot with ample room to move freely. Remember, if your goods are cramped in the pot, you are effectively creating a resist. You don't want that. You want everything to move easily. Trying to do all your scouring at once in a small pot is going to be counterproductive and lead to disappointment. You want to keep your goods beneath the surface of the water when you scour, mordant, tannin, or dye. If the cloth rises above the water level, the result can be a round spot. I run into this all the time when I'm troubleshooting dye problems. This is actually good news because the problem can be solved very easily. You simply take extra care during any in-pot process. If you're going to invest time and effort on a dye project, I recommend taking the time to babysit these processes. Ensure goods are moving frequently in the pot. Ensure they remain under the surface of the water as you work with your cloth. If you are working with a process that involves soaking overnight, rig up a simple system to ensure that the cloth remains under the surface of the water while it is soaking. With good scouring, everything else will go much easier. If in doubt, scour twice. If you've mastered your scouring and these in-pot techniques, but you still think something is not right, here are some ways to proceed. Consider the source of your water. Are you on a municipal system, a well, rainwater, or groundwater? If you are on a municipal supply, contact your water authority and ask for a water test. These are surprisingly easy to get and are usually available online. Test results will show the pH and the amount of dissolved minerals such as calcium, magnesium, and iron. If you are on well water or other source, you may also be able to arrange for a water test. Iron is the primary contaminant affecting dyeing in most situations, followed by calcium and magnesium. But even if your water analysis is clean, you could have an issue with your pipes or pots. Here is how to trace the source of your issue. If you can, find where the water enters your property or house. If you have a water main going to your house, is there a hose that can be tapped before the water flows through your domestic pipes? Sometimes you can find that the house pipes are iron, or corroded, or have lime scale. This gives you a chance to compare the water arriving at the property to the water coming out of your tap. If you have multiple hoses on your property, you may wish to test the water coming out of each one. In a separate clear glass jar, collect 100 mils of water from the various sources. Label the jars clearly. To test your pots, boil water in the pot for 30 minutes and let it stand overnight, and then use 100 mils of that water. To each jar, add a half a teaspoon of gallnut tannin. Stir well. If the color is gray or green-gray, you may have iron. If it remains a light tan, your water is fine. Here we have two waters. One is distilled water and one is water that we know is slightly contaminated with a bit of iron. So I'm going to show you that test with gall, gall powder, gall powder. We've waited 30 minutes. So you can see here is the distilled water with half a teaspoon of tannin, gall tannin, and here is water that's slightly contaminated with iron, half a teaspoon of gall tannin there, and you can see which color has come. If you had more iron in your water, your water might look like this. We're using gall powder here for our test, 
And half a teaspoon for this amount of water is a lot more tannin than you would have in your tannin bath. So your tannin bath would likely not look like this. It would be much clearer than this. You'll get an idea using this test if you have iron in your water. What I want to show you here is other ways of iron contamination. It's not all just in your water. It's not all maybe in your pipes. It can come from your studio and you really have to it's, it's impossible to keep our studios spotless and clean. We're dyers. But it's really important to understand where that iron contamination might come from. You know, something like this, really frustrating. That has not come from your water. That has come from a piece of fabric that has been in touch for a period of time with, um, with iron. Some things in our studio. We like to scoop out fabrics. If we have small pieces of fabrics in our dye bath, we'll often scoop them out with something like this, this uh, stainless steel sieve. And in time, these sieves become rusty. You can see this one's probably a little bit better to see how rusty it's become. We no longer use this one for doing that. We'll use this one for pouring things down the drain so we'll catch the raw material. Same with this one. And we get ourselves a brand new one that um, is nice and clean if we want to scoop out anything from the dye pot or any fabric that we leave sitting in something like this. Another place that these kinds of marks could come from is just your drain, like leaving fabrics to sit for any length of time in your, in your drain. Say you wash them out. If you, if you take the fabric out of the dye pot, everything's good. Um, you go to wash it in the, in the sink and you're in a tub and then you hang it no problem. You get distracted and you kind of leave damp fabric to sit and your drain might, you know, have some of this rust on it. It's a problem. Leaving utensils in your bath. I do this. It's really frustrating. Um, so I'll, I'll stir a bath with a, stain, a good stainless steel spoon, stir the bath, leave the spoon in overnight. And that will give, at times there'll be a reaction to that. Even though this is stainless steel, there'll be a, a, a mark that might get on to your fabric. Having a, having a rag that you have maybe, I use this to stir some iron, some, something with a ferrous in it, I clean it like this, the, fat, the thing is there, next dyer comes along uh, in our studio and puts some of their fabric onto this, onto this. It'll contact with iron and iron will transfer on a rack. If you've, on your, on your drying rack, if you've been drying uh, iron over dyed textiles and then you haven't cleaned it properly, or maybe your, your rack is getting a tiny bit of rust somewhere, a screw somewhere, something on your sink, a, a nick on your enamel pot that's gone rusty, all those things will cause marks on your, on your fabric that are frustrating. So you, you could have your utensils, it could be your pot that is um, got some iron going on with it. This pot used to be used for mordant dyeing in our studio, but it's no longer used for that. It's a little on the thin side for a stainless steel pot. It, uh, I don't like pots that have this kind of fixture on the inside with holding the handles in, so these often will go rusty where they're attached. So what I've put here on the table is some of the things that may happen if you have minerals in your water. So I just want to go through a bit of that. So we talked about cochineal being sensitive to pH and sensitive to minerals. So here's cochineal from our water. In Vancouver we have no minerals in our water and no and we're pH neutral. So that's typically of what we'll get from cochineal. But if you have calcium in your water you're more likely, this is cellulose is protein, you're more likely to get in this color. But if you have iron in your water you're going to get most likely get this color. Beautiful. Another bug dye lack here, same. You, this is what's coming in our water. If you have more calcium, you're gonna get in here, and if you have iron, you're gonna go towards this color here. Logwood, our water, more calcium, and iron in your, in your water. Here you have weld, our water, water with more calcium, you're gonna get a richer color. Like we said, some colors matter and weld, and they just love calcium in the water. Here we have weld again uh, with iron. So this is weld in our water. This is weld with a tiny bit of iron that's going on here. 
and this is welded with more iron. So difficult to get clear yellows, weld, Osage, Buckthorn, all of those yellows, marigold, if you have iron in your water, it's hard to get, impossible to get this color. But you do get these colors, which are beautiful. You may, if you want these clear colors to then over dye with indigo, for instance, you might want to consider getting distilled water. Here's matter, matter in our water, matter in water that has more calcium in it, and again, even more calcium. Matter just gets richer and richer with calcium. So this gives you an idea of what you might expect with various waters you might be working with. So you see here, this is a beautiful palette. And where you live and what is in your water is going to make your palette. And that's a good thing. You don't want to push against that. You don't want to start going out and getting distilled water for everything if you find you have some minerals in your water. You want to work with it. You want to adjust your recipes for it. You want to uh, develop your recipes from your, from your water. It's a good thing, but it's a really good thing to know your water so you know what's going on and you can create the palettes that you're searching for.